the pain like I'm Nagato. Got no father like I'm Naruto. Keep the blade on me, Ichigo. Who really wanna go toe for toe? DTR from Tokyo. Diamonds whipping up on the stove. Lucky man like a four leaf glow. Diamonds wanna go. Hello guys, this is Nagato, and welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, I'm basically going to be showcasing on how to install RetroArch onto your modded PlayStation 3. Things you'll need for this tutorial is this multi-man PKG package, and the reason why we need multi-man guys is so we could put our games onto our HDD, or aka our hard drive. You could also use your USB as well to upload, or basically to play games on it as well. But if you guys don't want to always have your USB in into your PlayStation 3, um, that's why we're going to be using multi-man to install that. You could also use Rebug Toolbox as well, and also files a little to transfer the files over. But just for today, and just for my tutorial purposes, we're just going to be using multi-man. Of course, you'll need this RetroArch PS3 uh, PKG. This is the actual program that will allow us to play uh, different types of emulators for a multitude of classic systems like Atari, uh, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, stuff like that. And of course, you need your game. So what we're going to be testing now today is our NES games, our Sega Genesis games, and also a Super Nintendo games. What I like to do, just real quick, I like to put all my games into one folder. So all my NES games will be in one folder all my second genesis games uh, i'll have in one folder and what i'll do today i'll just go ahead and drag this pack out since i don't want to copy over all 5,000 uh second genesis games since i'm trying to make this tutorial quick but um and once you have your games right now uh one thing you also need for this process is a usb that is formatted to fat32 to install the pkg files as well as to basically transfer your games onto your usb so once you have all of those uh things that i stated of course jailbroken playstation 3 as well we could get along with the tutorial so the first thing what you want to go ahead and focus on right now guys is go ahead and plug in your usb drive and make sure your USB drive is at least eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes. But what we need to focus on first is to make sure if our USB is on FAT32. And the easiest way we could test that is if we right click over the um, USB drive right here. Um, it may take a little second for me to load up since I've got a lot of programs running in the background. Hold on, let me try something real quick. Come over here and see. Yeah, if you just right click over your uh, hard drive right now and you go to properties, it should pop up right now and it states like your file system and it should be on FAT32. If your thing is not on FAT32, don't worry about it. What we're going to do is try to format it to FAT32. So all you would have to do is right click again, go to format. And then from here, you will get your USB drive and it'll tell you the label and capacity size. So as shown here, my file system is FAT32, but let's say if your thing was on XFAT or NTFS, all you would have to do is hit FAT32. Um, for your allocation unit size, you could either leave it as default allocation size or whatever your PC states as it manually. It really doesn't matter. And then for your volume label, you can name it anything. The reason why I just have mine's in all capital Sony because it was a part of the hack. Um, one of the steps for your PlayStation Classic, but that's besides the point. Also, what you want to do is go ahead and tick this uh, thing right here. Make sure it has the check mark to make sure you could basically um, quick format when you do this process because if you don't click it, it basically will take longer to format your USB drive. But once you have all those options set and done, go ahead and hit start. But before you guys hit OK, make sure you do back up your files. And this is usually the general rule of thumb when you try to mess with any USBs and stuff. Go ahead and back up your data either onto another USB drive or to your PC or upload it to the cloud if you do care about important files because anytime you basically mess with um, you know, reformatting, it wipes the drive clean when it tries to basically uh, change its partition to like a FAT32 or if you try to go from FAT32 to XFAT. But assuming y'all guys are on FAT32, what we need to do now is go ahead and take our package files and our games and just go ahead and drag and drop this to our USB. So right now, this uh, may take a little uh, while, so I'm going to just pause the video right here. It might not only take a minute, so actually, I'm not going to pause the video right here. I'm going to go straight to my PC. So once this process and all of your PKG files and your games transfer over to USB, go ahead and safely eject it. And then what we're going to do, guys, now is head to the PlayStation 3. And then I'm going to show you guys on how to install Multiman and also RetroArch onto your jailbroken PS3 and then 
from there, I'm going to add our games and do all that fun stuff. And then I'm going to play through some games. I think I'm about to uh, go ahead and showcase Super Mario World because that's one of my favorite games. But I'll meet you guys once this process is done on the PS3. Alright guys, so as you see here, you should see basically my PS3 X and B menu. What you want to do now is go ahead and plug your USB drive in with the games and also with your retro arc pkg file and also multiman what you want to do now is go ahead and go to package manager go to install package files and then from the third option right here you want to go ahead and install multiman and also retro arc just by clicking x i'm just going to skip that part because installing retro arc is pretty a big file and it takes a, quite a while to install i think it's like 433 megabytes but i just don't want to have this video too long for the process but basically once you install multiman and also um retro arc as well the first thing we want to go ahead and focus on is multiman so we're going to go ahead and boot into multiman so once your guys are in multiman as shown here what you want to do is go ahead and scroll all the way to the left go to file manager slash multiman operating system and then from there guys what you want to do is go to ps3 root and then you should basically see the root of your ps3 or basically all the directories i should say the first thing we're going to go ahead and focus on is dev underscore usb 001 and then with that just go ahead and double click x over it and now what we want to do is go ahead and find our game so for example nintendo games nes it showcases basically all the games within uh, you know in that folder so what we're going to do is go ahead and click x on each game and then just hover over them so mine's is nintendo and then i gotta find my sega genesis pack right here and then i'm going to go ahead and copy and where we're going to copy that to is basically our ps3 root dev underscore it's the zero and we're just going to go ahead and paste them right here so this process may take a little while depending on um the file size because what it's basically doing is copying our games off our usb drive to our playstation 3 hard drive so we would not need to you know always have our usb stick in you could play the games from your usb as i stated before earlier in the video but if you guys always you know just want to go ahead and boot the games up pretty quickly this is the easiest method right here so what i'm going to do is pause the video right here and then once all basically all your games has copied over we're going to go ahead and boot out of multi-man and then from there we're going to go ahead and boot up retro arc and i'm explain a little bit more about the cores and how to you know play the game so i'll meet you guys once this process is done all right guys so as shown here basically all my games has successfully been copied over to dev underscore hcd zero now what we want to do is go ahead and just hit r1 out and then basically just hold basically um your playstation 3 button and then just quit out the game and then we'll go back on to the xmb now that we are back on to the xmb what we want to do now is go ahead and go to our retro arc ps3 file and then just go ahead and select over it and click x and boot into the process so as you see here this is basically the retro arcs gui and this is how the menu looks like it's very similar onto how like the playstation 3 is as well so it doesn't look too different but i'll show you guys on how to basically load your games and basically how to load content so first things first um, the easiest way on how to do this is basically go to load core so each core is basically the embedded emulator that's already inside basically the dot cell files are already um, for your PlayStation 3 so for example if you want to go ahead and play a Super Nintendo game all you would just have to read is the one or basically read which core that you want that supports that so for example I just go go ahead and click this one right here your screen may turn a little black and green for a second but what it's doing is basically selecting that core and it's basically going to emulate for super nintendo games so the easiest thing now what we got to do is go ahead and select our game of our choice so what we're going to do now is go to low content and then basically you can find wherever your content is for example if you want to do it from usb go to dev underscore uh, usb zero or zero zero one depending on where your usb is at and as you see here I do see my Super Nintendo games. If you were going to do it from dev underscore HCD zero, which is your PS3 hard drive, you'll find your games right here. So in this case, we did Super Nintendo since we loaded up that core. What we want to do now is go ahead and choose a game of our choice. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and play one of my favorite games of all time, uh, Super Mario World. And then I could choose what core again for that process as well. And as it should show here in a few seconds, basically Super Mario World should boot up.
it may take a little while but there you go in real life time and this is super mario world being played on a playstation 3 so i'll just run through the game a little bit for a quick second if i wanted to pause the game all you would have to do is hit start and select if i believe or actually no it's i think it's r3 and l3 and then with that you'll get this little menu if you want to take a screenshot in the game you could also you know have a save state so basically without pausing the game you could also have cheats and other stuff like that as well but if you want to go ahead and back out just hit r3 and l3 again and then basically with that guys um that's how you could essentially play through your super nintendo or whatever classic games of your choice um if you guys did enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like and comment down below with that being said my name is nagato and i'm signing out thank you guys for watching of course i love the llamas nice and silky smooth